Welcome to another edition of Shop Talk. So today we're going to be talking about how and why Harrelson trumpets are different. And I want to dispel this crazy myth that some of the trumpet dealers who deal in instruments that aren't ours um, constantly put out there on the internet. And the reason I'm addressing this is because it's misinformation that isn't really good for anyone. It's not good for the people that are putting it out there because it discredits them. And it's not good for me because it discredits me. And it's not good for you because it hides you from the truth. And the truth is that CNC machining trumpets and trumpet parts is actually the best way you can possibly do it today. And I'm not going to convince you of that through a video. In reality, you're going to have to come visit us in Denver and try the, all the systems we've put in place for yourself. Because unless you actually get your hands on it and have some coaching to understand how to fit the systems to your specific playing preferences, you will never actually know if a machined trumpet that was designed and engineered on computers as well as using psychology and real world experiences for the last 25 years is good for you or not. You could say, well, a Bach works, so I'm gonna play a Bach. Well, that's great, but you know that's like the equivalent of driving a Model T just because you're a traditionalist and you love Henry Ford. In reality, if you truly want to take your plane to the next level, you might wanna up your game in terms of technology, versatility, and experience, because we have that. Um, so I'm gonna dispel the myth that one, uh, we charge a lot of money for you know, some CNC machine stuff that's just super easy to make, and two, that it's not valuable. Because the truth is, what we do here is far more valuable than the price tag that we charge. And CNC machining is just one tiny piece of a bigger manufacturing process that is designed to help you succeed. And to succeed in a way that is not possible using traditional techniques. So you can love your Bach or your Yamaha or whatever French Besson or Old Con or Holton or whatever cool horn you have. I love them too. I have more horns than you would believe. I love those horns too. So I'm with you. But to embrace those horns as if they are the holy grail of trumpet playing and to perform on them as if they are the, the, the highest of the high and the best of the best is truly um, like turning the lights off in the room and trying to find something because it, there's no truth to it. You may have experience with the horn and love it for certain reasons. That doesn't mean there isn't something that could perform better. Um, and the reason I know that is because I've developed the processes and I developed them from feedback and working directly with clients like yourselves, who a lot of which are very, very great trumpet players all around the world. I've worked with them and I've played trumpet professionally for many years and we've developed solutions. So I wanna talk a little bit about this and then I wanna show you some of the machining things and explain a little bit about some of the costs of our equipment and how and why it's possible to do these things, but why there, it does come with a cost, okay? So we're gonna dive into all of that and have a little bit of fun today. So the first thing I wanna show you is on our website, we have the 2019 VPS Summit G Series. Okay, this is directly related to what we're talking about. What makes our newest horn so great, so much better than a traditionally made instrument? Well, for one, the title says 2019. This was designed and built in 2019. It isn't, um, it isn't a design that was passed on from another design and passed to another company and then eventually bought by a corporation that was bought by another corporation that is now owned by Steinway. It's nothing like that, or now they're not even owned by Steinway. So it's nothing like that. This is 2019, meaning, hey guys, this is current, this is today. This is like the Apple iPhone 9, you know? It's the thing that doesn't exist. The reason I stress that is because if you're playing on a traditional instrument and you love it, great, but you are truly missing out. And I can say that with 100% confidence because um, playing a traditional design means that it was engineered and really created with original design and manufacturing methods, which are inferior to modern technology methods today. And that's, you know, I'll give you some parallels. That's why we have things like cell phones. That's why your car 
that might be a Honda Civic can outperform a Corvette from the 90s. You know, I mean, that's the truth. Um, not only that, but your Honda will probably outlast, you know, three, four, or five cars from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. It will require less maintenance. Everything was machined and designed and created better. And that's what we do here at Harrelson Trumpets. So 2019 is the first part of the name of this trumpet. VPS. What is VPS? VPS is a culmination of engineering experiments with clients and psychology. Variable, variable performance system, which I'm gonna scroll down a little bit here. You can see we even have a logo for the variable performance system. We take it so seriously we have a logo to describe what it is. Uh, basically, this is a system that allows you to change the airflow, the flexibility, the feeling of slotting in each partial, and the resonance, how much your horn actually vibrates in color, and the bell is feeding off the vibrations of the sound wave, and they work in um, unison so that they can create something resonant, something much bigger than it was, okay? So those, all those things are achieved through the variable performance system, which is huge. So the reason this horn is called 2019 VPS Summit is because we incorporate that technology. It's important, I care about it, and we're gonna talk about it. All right, Summit. Why would I name a horn Summit? Well, whether you know this about me or not, I have suffered some serious um, health defects since I was born. So I am prone to having heart attacks and strokes, and I have had many over the years. Uh, very severe medical conditions that, I mean, I've had events that have been very severe and have set me back many years throughout my lifetime, from the time I was a little boy until a few years ago. And uh, this hopefully is something that's in my past and will not ha recur very often, if at all. But um, because of that, I've had to constantly rebuild who I am and what I'm doing to climb up to the summit. Honestly, life for me to get to this point has been like climbing Mount Everest 50 times. Because every time I almost got close to the top, I almost always had some kind of a medical event that then brought me all the way back down to the bottom. And then again, and I'd try and I'd work sometimes for months or years and then I'd fall back down. And that has happened numerous times in my lifetime. It has been challenging and it has been like climbing a mountain. And when I finally achieved all of these things in my instruments and got there, I named it Summit because I finally achieved that goal. I got to the summit and I want you to, to find your summit as well. So that's why we call it Summit. It's because for me, it's a life journey, the Summit Trumpet. The G Series is the newest version. The G Series is something new, and I'm not gonna tell you what it is. Instead, you're going to see it revealed in the upcoming videos and on our website. It is not available yet. As you can see, it's not ready. It says it will be released in June of 2019. Okay, so that's why we're looking at this. The G Series, means it's better than the series before it. I'll tell you that much, okay? Now let's talk about CNC machining. Over here on this computer, I have um, a graphic that, I wonder if I can blow that up. You know what, I'm just gonna pull it over here on the bigger screen. That graphic represents something I was working on in 2012. You can see right here, there are all these green lines and some purple stuff, and down here you can see there's some more, there's another rendering. This is using computer-aided uh, design and computer-aided manufacturing techniques combined to create something new. So I designed a brace back in 2012, actually 2011, it talks about it in this blog entry. This entry is from January 4th of 2012, which was over nine years or seven years ago. And uh, I think that brace actually, I started working on it earlier, like a year earlier, so it's probably about eight years ago. And that brace was designed using a special kind of technology called finite element analysis. And that matters because that technology makes your horn more efficient. And that technology is something I have been studying since I dropped out of college many years ago. So why do I care? Well, I want as little of the energy you put into the horn to go into vibration until it gets to the bell and then I want it to resonate. 
So I want to conserve as much of your energy in your sound wave as possible until it gets to the bell. And then I want it to create the biggest, most beautiful, warm, brilliant tone that you've ever heard in your whole life. And that's what we do. That's why we do it. That's why I care. And that's why I've spent the last 25 years busting my butt to understand how to do these things. Because I didn't go to school for CAD or CAM or machining um, or trumpet design or any of those things. Remember, I went to school for trumpet performance. I was studying math, trumpet performance, and psychology. I was not going down this road intentionally. This happened because to solve the problems, I needed to learn it. So back in 2012, I posted this blog, which was all about machining trumpet braces and making them more efficient so that we could have a better horn. And here you can see I'm making a lead pipe out of two halves and putting them together. Why do I bring all this up? Well, that was seven or eight years ago. And now it's the year 2019. I wanna show you what I've done in the last seven or eight years because a lot of those people that are out there saying, oh, well, Jason, he just pushes some buttons on a CNC machine and then it, all of a sudden the value of his horns goes up, but it's just a bunch of gimmicks, you know? Well, it's not, there's no gimmicks here. Come meet me, come check it out, see it for yourself. If you aren't doing that, if you're not considering checking out what we're doing, you're missing out. And that's okay because there are millions of trumpet players and we constantly have a long waiting list. But if you really wanna learn and understand it, then come check us out. Uh, but don't just listen to hearsay on the internet from people that um, maybe just feel like they can't compete. I know they can't compete because these guys that do say that stuff, they either are threatened by it because they feel insecure about something or they just don't understand, but they're not doing it because there's any truth to it. So uh, where have I come in the last seven or eight years? Well, as you can see, that was a brace we were designing. Here is a new brace. This one is actually one of the heaviest ones that we make today. And the new version of it is incredibly light compared to this. This brace is an improvement on that one. So you can see it could be set up like that. This is CNC machined. It's taken me seven or eight years to be able to create this. If if computer-aided design and machining were so easy, why would it take me that many years to upgrade this system? And why would I even do it if it's so easy, right? The truth is, I wanted to make it better. My customers asked for something better. I'm a performer, I want it to be better. I'm also a perfectionist. I love making great things that work, that are engineered properly, that give us solutions. So I wanted to make it better. This allows you to put the lead pipe in from either end and have a modular lead pipe system. And in fact, I have that right here. So here it is. This is the system on one of our prototype horns. And this is the new Muse trumpet. So here we can take the lead pipe apart in segments. I can take this whole thing apart and then I can rebuild it using four different segments. So here it's coming apart in four different segments. And this allows us to build any profile that we want. So if you're looking to um, change the intonation on your horn, let's say you have intonation tendencies that you wanna work on, after you've acclimated to the horn, we can work on those tendencies and find solutions to them. Um, so eight years later, this is what we have. We have a modular system. And now we also have the modular brace for the bell, which this was the most recent version that I have made, but this allows us to then screw the bell into the horn and it fits in like that. So you can see we've come a long ways. Now we have modular bells, fully modular lead pipes. The bell crook itself is modular, so that would come in and screw into the horn and we can interchange all of these pieces and at the same time, we can machine them out of lighter and more efficient materials or even possibly 3D print or make them by hand. We still do a ton of handwork here at Harrelson Trumpets. We always have. Um, our typical horn requires maybe five to 10 times as much handwork time as a standard trumpet from like a major manufacturer. So in terms of handwork, we've always done a ton of that. We have to because machining isn't the ultimate solution yet, although we'd like it to be. 
Um, but you can see CNC machining is not some simple easy feat. It literally takes a lot of hard work, time, devotion, and uh, it's also a very challenging and rewarding but also disappointing career. And I, I enjoy telling people that I'm a machinist. I always feel very humble when I say that because being a true great machinist is a lifetime in, endeavor. It takes your entire life really to become great at it. And I know people that are much better at it than I am. And uh, I feel like I'm somewhere in the middle in terms of my skill level and my understanding, but I'm working very hard to be good at that. It's much like trumpet. Trumpet will eat you alive. If you take it seriously and you say, I wanna achieve X, Y, Z on the trumpet, you could spend your whole life trying to achieve that and maybe experience some successes and some failures. Machining is just like that, especially CNC machining. Now, it's interesting because on the trumpet side of things, there's this huge debate. Oh, traditional design or vintage horns are better versus, oh, try something new, like look at what Harrelson's doing or maybe Monette or Taylor or whoever, right? And there's this kind of uh, almost bipolar part of our industry or our community where people may or may not embrace the new stuff and they may really embrace the old stuff, but they don't always embrace both. Now I embrace both. I have a ton of respect for everyone that came before me and I hope I can respect everyone that comes after me because someone's gonna do it better than me and uh, after I'm gone, they're just gonna get better and better. I truly hope that. But it's interesting because in machining, we have the exact same thing happening. There are all these guys that are like, oh, I love CNC machining. What you may not know is CNC machining is relatively new. It really started in the 60s and 70s, and it didn't become a big thing until the 80s and 90s. And now today, most people are really embraced and invested in CNC machines of some sort. But there are the traditionalists, the manual machinists. I started as a manual machinist. I also started on an old, simple, uh, regularly built coronet. So I understand the tradition side of things and playing on the old equipment or machining on the old machines where you had to turn the hand wheels. I still have those and I still use them. But I also embraced the new technology. I created all these solutions for trumpet players and even now for other brass instruments. Um, but also I've embraced CNC machining. And it's a funny thing because if you go on a CNC machining forum, then what you hear on Trumpet Herald and Trumpet Master is nothing compared to what you'll hear on a CNC forum. On CNC forums, those guys will rip each other apart to the point where you can't even read it, it's so vulgar. I don't know why they get so upset, but trumpet players are doing this too. We're a community, we should all be part of the same community. We don't need to divide each other over new and old and all these silly things. Embrace it all, enjoy it. Find what works for you and make the most of it. That's what I, that's what I truly believe. But um, CNC machining can truly be one of the most challenging things I've ever done, as well as playing the trumpet. And I'll tell you this, I'm a pretty damn good trumpet player, but there are a lot of guys who walk in here and blow me away. I can do some things they can't, they can do a million things I can't, and we have a lot of respect for each other. It doesn't matter what horn they're playing. If they walk in here with a Monette, I have the same amount of respect. If they walk in here playing uh, an 1850s coronet, then I still have the exact same respect. Why? Because we have brotherhood or sisterhood, whatever it might be. We have the family of people who have worked really hard to devote themselves to this instrument, just like machining. So I encourage you to throw out all your silly craziness of liking or disliking each other for whatever reason. And then I'm gonna show you this. This is a trumpet brace, just to cause a little controversy. This is the brace that fits right here. That one's in a crazy cool blue acrylic and it can go in place of that one. And yes, I love having fun with the visual side, the aesthetics, all of it. And we will build horns out of stuff like that too. So please, just if you don't like it, then fine, don't like it. But you don't have to be angry about it. And you definitely don't have to dispel it with more myths. You know, if you don't know fact, then learn the truth and then maybe if you don't want to spread the truth then just don't say anything because um you know the trumpet dealers that are out there that are saying these things um truly as soon as the word gets out then they discredit themselves i don't know how many times i've heard someone call me or come in here and say oh yeah i visited so and so in new york or whatever other city 
And uh, they were the ones that were really against your stuff on Facebook or Trumpet Herald or whatever. And, uh, you know, I had to pull out my horn and show them actually everything's great. You know, I love it and everything works better, you know. It, it makes them look bad. And it's not good. Let's just embrace reality, embrace truth. If you want to know more about what we do, come visit us. We work our butts off creating the best things that we can for you, the best solutions. And I want to encourage you to watch my other recent videos um, where we really discuss how and why we get into all this. So I have one thing sitting here I just want to show you real quick. I'm going to pull it up close to the camera. This should shed a little bit of light on what we do, okay, and why it costs so much money. Can you guess what this is? This is just one of many different types of vices that we have to hold stock. So we can put a piece of metal stock in here and then machine it on a machine at different angles. And the reason I bring this up is because the company that made this created their own system, a dovetail system, that allows them to lock and slide stock into the machine and hold it very strongly with a lot of tool clearance. Whether you understand this stuff or not, here's what I'm gonna say. It's a non-traditional new type of vice that came out maybe 10 years ago. And this company um, gets a lot of flack for creating something new that's different from the way we used to do it. And again, you have the traditionalists that are like, use a vice that just closes like this. And other people say, no, use this Raptor thing. It's really cool because it's got the dovetail. Well, we can use all of it, and I use all of it. But they charge a lot of money for these. The reason they do is because they engineered. They took a ton of time learning how to make them how to make the system work perfect, and how to produce them on high quality machinery and out of great product, uh, steel or aluminum, or whatever the product might be. Guess how much this little tiny vice cost? Can you guess? I've asked all of my team members how much they thought it cost, and none of them got it right, but I'll tell you. This was $970. And if I'm gonna automate the production of 15 different parts using 15 of these vices, then yes, it will cost me 14 or $15,000 in these little vices. And I've already spent, you know, one, two, three thousand dollars each on each of my other vices, and I probably have a dozen. So when you when you say, oh man, why are Harrelson trumpets so expensive? Well, one, I need to make a living. I need to grow my team. We buy expensive machines, expensive uh, equipment to be able to make the parts. Here is a collet. I don't know if you know what this is, but a good collet today, we have probably around five or 600 collets of different sizes. We need them. On average, they probably cost us, I would say 50 to $60 each. However, some of them cost upwards of 150 to $250 each. If you start to do the math on how much I've invested to create products for you, then you may start to see why our products cost more because they're going to. We're embracing modern technology. It is not cheap, it is not easy, but the rewards are great and I encourage you to check them out because we have invested millions of dollars into our equipment that really does improve the process of how you can fit a horn to someone and how we can guarantee that you can adjust it and fine tune it for the rest of your life so that it always fits the situation that you need and your changes as you go through your lifetime and the changes as a player. Because as we get older, our bodies change, our approach changes. A lot of times we become better at what we're doing and then we fine tune things. And maybe we even change genres. We wanna play in different types of musical groups. We can adjust all those things to fit. And the reason we can do all that is because we created these systems, because we embraced CAD technology and computer-aided machinery and all the CNC machines we have here. I'm going to grab the phone and just show you. So right behind us here is our CNC, one of our CNC lathes. This is a $250,000 machine. And this machine can cut two parts at the same time. It can cut stainless steel, titanium, brass, whatever it might be. But that's just one of our machines. And the tooling for that, you know, easily could cost another $50,000. Here is... Uh, another $100,000 machine. This is our VMC. And I don't have any of these machines turned on this morning because it's early in the morning. Here's a fixture I just made. I spent the last week just making this fixture. And to create this whole system probably took me um, 
I mean, if you incorporate everything, it took me months to do all the different things that this does. And, you know, again, probably another five to ten thousand dollars without labor. Uh, here is another one of our CNC lathes. This is the one that's in most of the videos because it's easier to film in. And that's another very expensive CNC lathe, just like the one you saw before. So we invest a ton of our time, energy, and money into these things. Here's some of our collets. I'll show you some more. Here's some of our bigger collets. And here's even more bigger collets. Those ones are mostly still in the boxes, but the ones that we use almost every day are stored right there next to some trumpet cases. And we have all different types and sizes. These are the ones that fit the big CNC lathes. Uh, when it comes to tool holders, you know, we, uh, we have a ton of tool holders. Let's look under here. People who think CNC machining is just pushing some buttons and boom, you're done. Yeah, you guys are just, you know, embracing mythology. Here's one of our vices. It fits into that system I just showed you. It fits onto here like that. It also can fit on this position and turn any direction. So, you know, you're looking at some pretty serious equipment. Here's some spindle speeders. Each one of these costs about five or $6,000. We have one, two, three, four, five, that's a different type. And then we have two more in the machine, one of which costs $14,000. I and mean, that stuff is expensive. But we need that to be able to make the solutions that we provide. So um, here's some fixtures. These are some fixtures I'm working on right now. These are all specially engineered things for me to make fixtures just so I can build your horns. Let's look at some other cool stuff real quick. Here's some lead pipes. Lead pipes that I'm building. Braces. Actually, my bench is a little bit of a mess today because I'm putting together a few different projects all one after another. So you can see. And I moved stuff out of the way to get these fixtures going. So my whole point is we have really put in the time and the energy. Let me make sure that's still on. Yeah, it is. We've put in the time, the energy, and devoted ourselves to creating solutions for you. We're not doing this because it somehow is easy to press buttons on CNC machines. The truth is pushing go on one of those machines can be the most nerve-wracking thing you ever do in your life. Imagine getting on stage at Carnegie Hall, playing a solo in front of Lincoln Center Jazz or something, and how nervous you would be. You are that nervous the first hundred times you push go on a CNC machine. Because if you do it wrong and you program something wrong, you can break a one or two or three hundred thousand dollar machine like that. And you don't want to do that. You know, that would be more nerve wracking than missing a few notes on at Carnegie Hall. Um, I just realized also right behind me here is our laser welder. This allows me to put things in here and laser weld them because it's a better process than purely soldering. And this little baby was really one of the coolest things we ever purchased a few years ago. That was $18,000 and that was after I got it on sale, <laughs> you know? So yeah, it's, it's not a, a simple, cheap, um, easy experience. It took me probably six whole months to get good at using that laser welder so I could make really nice seams. And the first three months, I honestly probably didn't produce anything that was valuable at all uh, because the learning curve was so steep. So I want to thank you all for joining me today. Um, if you have not checked out our horns or our mouthpieces or any of our solutions, I encourage you to just give us a call and, and discuss what you're working with and what your challenges are and let us help you find solutions because that is what we do. We're passionate about it. We love working with all of our customers and uh, we have devoted our, our entire uh, business to serving you. So um, thank you again for joining me and I'll see you in the next Shop Talk.